Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is your man Mr. Do. Science is my business. You are welcome to Mr. Do Science World. And today we're going to talk about chemical equilibrium. Alright, so we said we're looking at chemical equilibrium today. So let's look at it and see. Let's try first and begin by looking at a hypothetical reaction. Uh, if you have a hypothetical reaction such as A plus B giving you C plus D and we consider this graph so let's look at the graph below and see what is happening uh, when this reaction reaches equilibrium so if you look at the graph that we have there we can see that there is a forward reaction and there is a reverse reaction but if I have A plus B equals to C plus D which is called the forward reaction and which one is called a reverse reaction. We can see there is a double arrow. That double arrow tells you the reaction is reversible. So if you see A plus B equals to C plus D, that is the forward reaction. And if you see C plus D equals to A plus B, that is what we refer to as the reverse reaction. So now in a reverse reaction, there are two reactions which take place at the same time. These are the forward and the reverse reaction. When the reaction reaches equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Also, when equilibrium is reached, the concentration of the reactants and the products remains constant and this is called dynamic equilibrium so when we reach a point where the concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the product remains constant that is there is no change in the concentration of the reactants and there is no change in the concentration of the product then we say that we have reached a point which we refer to as a dynamic equilibrium now there are some factors that affect the state of equilibrium and that is what we are going to look at now the balance or the state of equilibrium of a revisable reaction can be disturbed by change in a certain factor so whenever we reach a point of equilibrium and there is a change in any of these factors that we are going to talk about right now there is there will be a change in the state of what equilibrium so let's look at these factors the factors that we are going to look at number one is concentration number two we will look at temperature number three we speak of pressure and then we can talk about a catalyst as well so Let's now look at a catalyst and say how does the catalyst affect the rate or the state of what? Equilibrium. Okay. A catalyst has no effect on the state of equilibrium. That is, whenever we introduce a catalyst into a reaction, the state of equilibrium is not being affected by the catalyst. It only helps to bring the system to what? To equilibrium at what? At, at a quicker rate. That is, by increasing the rate of the forward or the reverse reaction. The catalyst cannot change the rate of the reaction. What it does is that it helps us by increasing the rate of the forward reaction and increasing the rate of the reverse reaction. And remember that we said... The point where the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction is constant is referred to as what? A dynamic equilibrium. So, we will then look at something that we refer to as Lecture Theory's principle. It is a French scientist who decided to do an analysis on the state of equilibrium of a given reaction. And he came out with this principle so we named the principle after him and said lecture principle 
Now, what is Lechetere's principle? Lechetere's principle is used to explain the effect of these factors in the state of what? In the state of equilibrium. Okay, now let's look at Lechetere's principle. When the equilibrium in a system is disturbed by changing any of the conditions surrounding the, the equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to cancel the effect of the change. This is what, what Lechetere's principle is saying. Now let's look at pressure. So we will consider the following reaction. SO2 plus O2 giving you SO3. And when you look at this, you can see that this reaction are all gases. And that is why we speak of gases. So once there are gases, we can talk about what the pressure. So once there are gases, there is pressure. And when you look at the reactant side, we can see that we have two moles and one mole giving us a total of three moles on the reactant side but on the product side we are having what two moles so what will happen if there is a change in this number of moles the left hand side has three moles of gas and the right hand side has two moles of gas the three moles of the gas applies more pressure than two moles therefore an increase in the pressure will make the equilibrium to shift to the side that applies the less pressure that is the right hand side you can see the left hand side is having two moles the right is having three so immediately we increase the pressure we expect that the the what the equilibrium should shift to the what to the right hand side which is having the less number of moles so in conclusion, what are we saying? An increase in pressure favors the side with what? With a fewer moles. And a decrease in pressure favors the side with more moles. All right, so let's begin by looking at some questions just to broaden our understanding. So let's look at question number one. A chemical reaction is in equilibrium when A, the reactants are completely transformed into products, B, the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal, C, the formation of the product is minimized, and D, an equal amount of the reactants and the products are present. Well, when we look at the options and we look at the question that we are given, what we are looking for is to look at the definition of what? Of equilibrium. And remember that we began by looking at two equations to say that there is a forward reaction and there is a reverse reaction. And we said the point where the two are equal or the concentration of the product is equal to the concentration of the reactant is what we say it is what is a dynamic equilibrium therefore if you look at the options that we have right now the best option that satisfies the question that we are given is the option b which is the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal let's look at number two number two the following reaction take place in a gas syringe and we are giving N2O4 and 2MO2. And we can see that the N2O4 is what? It's a clear solution or it's a clear gas. And then the NO2 is brownish. What is observed when equilibrium is reached? Remember we have spoken about right now, talking about the point where the rate of the forward reaction being equal to the rate of the reverse reaction or we have spoken about a point where we said the reactant 
is now equal, concentration of reactant is equal to the concentration of the product. So, let's look at the options. Option A, the color and the pressure do not change. Is that true? That is not even something to think of. So, that can never be an answer. The microscopic properties remains constant. That is not true. If a chemical reaction happens, even though the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, or the concentration of the reactant is equal to the concentration of the product, it does not change the fact that the microscopic properties remain constant. No. The reaction is still going on, and that means our physical eyes cannot see, and that is where we speak of the microscop microscopic word properties. Therefore, we can say the microscopic properties are constant. The microscopic properties kept on changing. The ones that our eyes can see is not changing. That is what remains constant. So that is also not true. Therefore, the best option for this is the what? Is the forward and the reverse reaction takes place at the same time. The micro, our eyes can see. The macro, we can see. So for the macro, that is where we speak of the word, the reverse and the forward, or the concentration of the reactant and the product. And then we say they are constant, so they are not changing. But then once our eye can see, it's going on because the reaction still keeps moving. So the best option is the option D. Let's look at number three. Which of the following changes will increase the amount of Y2 gas in an equilibrium reaction below? So what we are given is an equilibrium reaction that is X2 gas plus Y2 gas giving you X3 Y gas. When you look at it, we are talking about gases. Therefore, what you first come into your mind is the what? We can talk about the pressure. Okay, we can talk about the what? the concentration as well and if you look at this we said the pressure option a says the pressure of the reaction mixture should be increased to cause a change in volume b a catalyst should be added to the reaction mixture remember a catalyst does not change the rate of a chemical equilibrium what it does is to just to speed up the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction. So that can be an option. The concentration of X2 should be increased. Remember, if we increase X2, then it means we are expecting that what the forward reaction should be favored. So therefore, we can talk about that. D, the concentration of X3, Y should be what? Should be increased. So... The best option is the word option D. Let's look at number four. In the below reverse reaction, a catalyst will, we are looking at a catalyst. So what is going to happen? Remember this equation that we have here, or this reaction that we are having is a revisable reaction. So immediately we speak of a catalyst, what should come to your mind is the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction can be increased by this catalyst. So, if you look at it, the another thing that we need to look at is the equation. The reaction is what? It's an exothermic reaction because delta H, which is the enthalpy, is what? It's less than zero, which means it's a negative enthalpy. So, if it is having a negative enthalpy, then we can speak that it is what? An exothermic reaction. So let's look at the options. A. Increase the activation energy of the reverse reaction. That's not true. B. Speed up the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction. C. Cause the equilibrium to shift to the right. It's not true because we are talking about catalyst. So catalyst cannot affect the rate, uh, the state of what? Equilibrium. Increase the heat of the word of the reaction. That's not true. We can't talk about increasing the heat. What we can talk about is the word is the rate of the word of the reverse and the forward word reaction. Therefore, the best option for
for this is what? Is B. Thank you very much for watching this video. And in our next video, we'll be talking about equilibrium constant. And we know that most people have problem with the calculation of the equilibrium constant. So please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that each time you release any new video, you'll be the first person to watch it. As you subscribe, click on the notification bell as well so that you'll be informed immediately a video is being released. See you when we are talking about equilibrium constants. Bye-bye.